Hola familia, it's Carlos Medina, President and CEO of the Statewide Hispanic Chamber of Commerce of New Jersey. We're here in partnership with the Asian Pacific American Chamber, and it's my uh, privilege and honor to be able to host this uh, Chamber Talks Edition 2 for all of our familia. We have some great people here today. We do apologize. I apologize, we've been having some technical difficulty, so uh, my next person that you're going to meet is uh, Hollywood director, business owner, and president of the Pan-Asian American Chamber of Commerce, my friend, Kwa Lee. Hey everybody, um, yeah, sorry about that, we were, we were bringing in our guests and uh, we wanted to make sure our guests look good. And uh, <laughs> so, uh, yes, I'm uh, the, if, for those who don't know, I'm the president for the U.S. Pan-Asian American Chamber of Commerce, in, uh, in short, U.S. PAC, and I represent the, the Northeast region. I also have my company at k -Vibe Productions and k -Vibe Studios, and uh, what you see here is also uh, uh, k -Vibe, uh, Go Live Now. And, um, and our Chamber Talks is all about, it's all about, bringing business updates to the chamber and and uh, Carlos and I we we spoke about why don't we merge our uh, our organizations and put in an event together that is going to allow that's going to help people uh, especially during during this crisis and uh, and with uh, I think with two chambers and uh, with with that type of support, I think it's just the more the merrier. And how we help everybody, um, that's what this chamber talks is all about. So with that, I wanna I wanna remind everybody to make sure that you're subscribing to the youtubecom shccnj and also make sure you hit the like button on Facebook, uh, share it as much as you can. Uh, go to YouTube, also hit your like button as well because it changes the algorithms and also allows it comes uh, to, for the for the playlist to be uh, uh, for the search to be on top. And, uh, and at the very end, make sure you're 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 sending up your questions. This is a live Q and A. Um, and so, I guess before we get before we bring our next guest, uh, let's just roll the bumper. The largest chamber in the state. These 60 million Latinos. You are part of what makes this country great. Congratulations. Ah! Thank you. So, Carlos, so, uh, I want you to introduce your guest because this is your guest that you brought on. Uh, so, uh, take it away. Yeah, he is my guest, and this is a gentleman. I'm not. I can't remember if I've told the story. Marco was actually my big brother in law school, um, so I know him for a long time. And as this crisis has reminded us, you often turn to your familia and people that you trust. So the chamber is very lucky to have somebody that I trust very much. I trust him with uh, my company, with my personal legal issues. And of course, when the chamber was in need of somebody of his legal acumen and skill, uh, Marco was the natural choice and he's done a great job for us. So the fact that you have him all as the general counsel for the statewide Hispanic Chamber of Commerce um, is a great benefit to our members and we, we're sharing him with our familia. So today he's gonna do a brief presentation on an update on what uh, was recently approved in Washington on the PPP loans and the EIDC loans and a little bit of coverage on if you have the good news of getting the loan, you have to have the proper uh, backup to then make sure that the loan is forgivable. So, uh, Marco, take it away, and thank you for helping us out. Thank you, Carlos. You're welcome, Koa. Nice meeting you. So I'm going to get right into it. I'm going to talk about those three areas, basically. Uh, the chamber's going to have a PowerPoint that we're going to send to everybody. Uh, we don't have that available now, but a couple of things that have happened in the last 48 hours. The Senate and the House passed a bill to increase funding for the uh, CARE Act, uh, specifically for the payroll uh, protection program, the PPP. As of an hour or two ago, the president, I don't know if the president has signed it yet. Once it's signed into law, then that funding will be uh, available uh, based on 
you know, the Department of Treasury's actions in getting that money to the lenders. It adds $310 billion to CARE Act funding. Out of that $310, $60 billion is going to go towards the uh, SBA's Economic Injury Disaster uh, Loan Program, uh, and 10 of that will be devoted to the grant, emergency grants for, for businesses. Um, the other component is that it adds uh, funding to lending institutions serving minority and underserved areas via the community development financial institutions and uh, or CDFIs and minority depository institutions. Um, we don't have a guidance on how though that funding is going to work because the Department of Treasury is expected to issue a interim final rule or guidance on that. So I'm going to show you later on how to uh, do some searches to make sure you get the information as soon as it's published. So let's go to the PPP update. Uh, if you applied but was unable to get funding for a loan for PPP or uh, EID, EIDL or both, contact your bank immediately. As soon as you get off this presentation, contact them, please. Um, ask your bank if it still has your application and if it will be resubmitted to the SBA when the process starts. Uh, there's some clients I know that applied for the, uh, for the loans, but the funding ran out. You shouldn't have to reapply. You don't want to get put in the back of the line. So make sure you contact your bank. Make sure you don't have to resubmit that they have your information and that as soon as they get funding out of this new funding that comes in, that you're processed before any person that didn't apply first. That's very important. Remember, you could only apply for one PPP loan. Uh, so you want to check with your bank if, if that went through. If you didn't apply previously for whatever reason, um, you, you found out that there wasn't enough funding for whatever, do it ASAP. Contact your, your, your bank and get that paperwork in uh, because it is, it is expected that this money will dry up very fast. So don't delay. Um, with regards to applying uh, through a CDFI, uh, um, we don't know what the, that application is going to look like until we get the interim uh, rules published by the Department of Treasury. So do you, what you could do now to find out what's happening is go to the uh, www.cdfifund.gov www.cdfifund.gov and monitor that website and see what instructions they have in there once these rules come out. You could also go to the uh, NJEDA's website for CDFI. They, they have a specific page for that. The web address is very long, but if you Google uh, NJEDA and CDFI, you should get onto that uh, their website really quickly. So if you don't know if you qualify for a PPP or, or um, another loan, EIDL loan, uh, we have, the chamber did a very extensive deep dive into the, the loan process under the CARES Act. You could find it on the Facebook page for the April 3rd, 2020 presentation we did or in the chamber website. So I'm going to move forward to forgiveness. So assuming you were able to apply for a loan and you got the loan, so you want to be able to forgive, get 100% or as much forgiveness uh, as possible under the CARES Act. So what do you have to do? So you can get all of your funding forgiven if you spend at least 75% on payroll costs and the remaining 25% on other covered costs. I'm gonna go into the definition of payroll costs in a moment. So what are the other covered costs? Interest payments on debt obligations that were in place by February 15, 2020. Rent payments on leases 
that were in place by February 15, 2020, and utility uh, payments on service agreements that were in place again by February 15, 2020. So what are payroll costs? I'm getting a lot of questions on what consists of payroll costs. So payroll costs generally consists of salary, wages, commissions, tips, or similar compensation, uh, payment for vacation, parental, family, or medical, or sick leave, uh, allowances for separation or dismissal, uh, payment for provision of employee benefits consisting of group health care, including insurance uh, premiums. If you're an independent contractor or a sole proprietor, your wages, commissions, income, and net earnings from self-employment and similar, similar compensation will constitute uh, payroll wages. Remember, and I sound like a broken record, seven, at least 75% of the money that you get from the loan proceeds has to go into payroll wages. Can it be 80%? Can it be 90? Some people I know are doing 100%. That's fine. But if you only spend 75% on payroll wages from your loan proceeds, the remaining 25% must be under that other covered areas that we discuss. So you get your loan. And at that time that the loan is funded, you have eight weeks to, to spend that money. So it's not required, but I highly recommend that you set up a separate bank account and you put in the loan proceeds in a separate bank account. Why? Because while it's not required by the Department of Treasury, you have a separate account. The money is there and it's easy, right? You could easily document where all that money goes and you can show that X amount went for payroll, the other amount went for covered. And if you set up that account with the same bank banking institution where you got the loan from, it will be easy. They know the records are there. The documentation will be there. It'll be easy. Yes. Is it another red tape for you to do to set up account? But I'm telling you, even though it's not required, I highly recommend it. And of course, maintain uh, uh, documentation of all the payments you made pursuant to that loan. Um, what does the loan forgiveness process look like? So while you're going through this eight-week period, make sure you contact your bank and get their application for loan forgiveness. And that's going to basically tell you the information that they're going to require for you to submit so that they could give you, uh, they could evaluate loan forgiveness. Okay. Once you submit that application, the bank has 60 days uh, from that time period to make a decision on, on forgiveness. And again, make sure you document everything so that it makes the process easier. So, Loan forgiveness. There's some things that the whole process about and, and policy behind this program is to keep Americans working and to get them paid. So if there's been a reduction in your employee count, your FTE count, or if you reduce their salary, let's say you didn't get rid of anybody, or but if you reduce their salary, then there's going to be a reduction in the amount that you are uh, forgiven. So let's so let's go into the FTE. Uh, fo follow me here is going to be difficult since you don't have a slide, but I want to go over this uh, scenario. So assume you have a $400 loan from the government, PPP loan, and you use $300,000 for payroll costs. That's 75%. And the remaining 100000 is used for a combination of other covered expenses. No problem. That means 100% of that loan should be forgiven. Okay? That's the easiest example. But let's say you had to furlough some employees. And you furloughed employees uh, during the covered time period. So the bank is going to look from January 1st of this year to February 29th to see what your FTE is, what your uh, number of employees are. 
let's say you had a hundred, okay, and you got you furloughed five of them. So during the cover period, you had 95 employees. So what the bank is going to do is going to say your FTE is going to be 95%. So the forgiveness calculation is going to be that $400,000 loan multiplied by 95% equals $380,000. So the bank is going to forgive $380,000. The rest of that 20 you're going to have to pay back under the terms of the loan in that example. So um, the other example that I have is, let's say you don't furlough anyone, but you had to cut their pay. Again, your forgiveness is going to be reduced based on that amount. The formula is a little more complicated because you can reduce their pay uh, up to but not exceeding 25% of the total salary or wages paid to that employee for the most recent quarter before that eight week period. I know it's complicated, but let me try to give you an example. Again, you have that $400,000, you get that loan. 300,000 is used for payroll costs. Uh, 100,000 is for covered expenses. All right, at that point, 100% of the loan should be forgiven. However, your FTE count, let's say you had 40 employees between January 1 and February 29, 2020, and you each paid those employees $20,000, okay? So that will bring it a payroll of 800000 But during the cover period, you didn't lay anybody off, but you cut their pay from 20 to 15,000 each. So that means your payroll was 60,000, not 20, right? But because that is not over 25% of your prior payroll, you're still gonna get 100% forgiveness in that scenario. But if you paid uh, a reduction beyond 25%, then the government is going to reduce that amount from your forgiveness. Um, again, it's hard during the time period that I have to go over every different scenario. So it is important that you uh, connect with your CPA, your accountant, your bookkeeper to go through these uh, uh, calculations in detail. I should add that the regulations do provide a fix Okay, so here's the fix. And again, forgive me, I don't have uh, the calculations, but let's say you had to reduce your FTE count. Uh, if by June 30th of this year, if you increase your headcount to the numbers you had pre-February 15, 2020, then they're not going to reduce your forgiveness. Likewise, if you didn't, lay anybody off, but you cut their pay beyond that 25% based on the previous quarter, if you increase those employees' pay uh, before June 30, 2020, then that will provide a fix for you, and they won't eliminate or reduce your forgiveness. Again, every business has a unique set of circumstances, so it's important that you um, interface and discuss these issues with your accountant, um, your CPA, so they can help you do these calculations with you before you apply for your loan forgiveness. Again, uh, you know, that's the time that I have, uh, but if there's any questions, uh, the Chambers has my uh, contact information, uh, Marco Gonzalez at OGCSolutions.com. So thanks for your time, and I look forward to any questions that you may have. I'm going to throw a question at you, Marco. Um, I got a question regarding the furlough. What if I bring back the person who I furloughed? How does that impact my loan forgiveness? You have to bring them back by, by before... June 30, 2020. 
and you got you should look at the regs and talk to your accountant uh, regarding that. So it, you you would do the calculations as if that person was furloughed and see how much the forgiveness will be reduced by based on that. Uh, but you would have to bring the person back before June 30 in order to get that uh, fix done so that they don't reduce the loan forgiveness of, because of the lower FTE. I have a, I have a question for you. So... Um for those, uh, so I, I've, I'm a small business owner, and I went through the the first. I'm trying. I went. I was one of the first ones to fill out the the PPP loans that came out, and I was on the fence between going with big bank to smaller bank. And obviously, the the the, the big bank have the capabilities to get that to get that out there, in my, the, at least the application format through their AI and through their internal, to their clients much faster. The smaller banks had a harder time to getting it out there uh, first, but they, 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 they lagged them maybe a week later. But my experience was this. They might have opened the doors up very quickly, but there's three more doors that goes that you, when you're going through the PPP process. My experience is that uh, I've, I'm the first one to fill it out. And then, the, and then a week later, they were asked me, hey, we need you to send your documents in. What, what do you need? You need your 940 form. We need, your, uh, we need uh, your payroll form and everything else. I says, why didn't you ask me from the beginning? Because I'm, I, I was trying to get it in there. Now, me being first in line, now I'm 50,000 in a waiting list. And then... And they, if, and the, and then because I was because I, I, I worked through a PEO company, Just Works. What happened was that uh, they asked for a 940 form. When SBA for, SBA says that you don't need it, but yet the banks require or ask for a 940 form. And because because I, I understand, you know, I could empathize that it's so, it's very unclear, especially in the beginning of it. And so what happens is that your uh, so they asked for the 94. I had to send a letter in, getting a letter from my PEO company. APO, for those who don't know, it's like an ADP, the payroll company and stuff, right? And so I was, I was submitted, and now I'm two weeks in, and I'm lagged again. And, you know, and, and my decision of going, why going with a, uh, a, you know, a bigger company to a small, I would think that would get through the pipeline faster. Unfortunately... I was never, I, I never got my PPP, and they're still emailing me today, send me your 940 form. So, yeah, you could say I'm screwed for that one. However, however, I, I was able to, I, I, the good news is that I had a backup plan. I went through another company called New Tech, and they're a smaller company. They work very exclusively to an SBA, and they told me, uh, they told me, I went out, they gave me the application, I filled it out, and one day they processed it. And now I'm in line for the next round of the PPP. Well, I'm glad to hear that. That's unfortunate. There's been a lot of issues uh, with the larger banks. And, you know, it's public information. There's been already a number of class action lawsuits filed against some of the big banks as mm -hmm. a result of their implementation of the program. And, you know, you've seen the news about some of these other large companies that were allowed to get loans and get funding to the exclusion of small businesses. Uh, in your particular situation, feel free to reach out to me uh, privately so we could discuss this. But just remember, you could only have one PP loan in the pipeline. So you want to make sure that your prior loan submission, that you uh, retract that. And that's in your best interest so, so that when it gets to the SBA uh, for funding, they don't kick it back because they see two applications of the same entity with two institutions. So you want to make sure that does, that doesn't come back to haunt you. Mm -hmm. That's a good point. Yeah, absolutely. I don't think they even submitted it in the, in the first place. <laughs> um, but thank you so Mark, much for the information. One more question popped in uh, from Brian. He said, you mentioned raise their payback or rehire by June 30th. Don't you have to pay them during the eight-week window at a hundred percent level. Well, the thing is, is so again, there's different. The headcount and the wage decline are two different things. So you need to do the calculations 
for each separately. So if you did decline your FTE count, you got to do the calculations as to what the reduction of forgiveness is going to be. But if you bring your FTE count back to the level prior to February 15th, then that will be considered as a fix and they won't they won't reduce the number the, the level of forgiveness. And likewise, it's a similar analysis, but different, the different calculations if you reduce their pay. So they they so theoretically, yes, I mean you should be paying them. If you want 100% forgiveness, well, you were paying them before. But some people, uh, some of the clients that I had to deal with, they didn't know if they were going to get the loan. They didn't, there was uncertainty. So in order to, uh, you know, based on their business situations, they had to cut people or other people that they kept, they had to reduce uh, their pay. So every situation is different, but you got to get these calculations done separately and make sure that they're right and if you bring them back so if you bring in these your FTE back to what the number was before uh, February 15th and you got to get that done by June 30th likewise any salary reduction if you didn't lay anybody off or you reduce their pay you, you got to make sure that that you bump up their pay again before uh, June thirtieth, in order to get the fix available under the regulations. Great, thanks, Marco. Thank you, Marco. Um, I don't have any questions on my end. Oh, you know, thanks actually, I'm, I'm, thinking, time, I'm actually Marco. thinking. I'm actually thinking about. So, before you go, I'm actually thinking about this. Uh, do you think down the line that the forgivable flex, the forgivable, uh, uh, I guess, regulation? Would it be a little bit more looser in terms? In the yeah, I, you know, anything is possible. But again, um, you know, based on the the rush for the processing of these loans, and it is anticipated that this new tranche of funding is going to go quickly, uh, who's to say? So I, I will not assume that there's going to be a, a relaxing of these rules. Go in with the rules that we have in place. If you um, want to get more specific in information regarding these calculations, you can go to the uh, Small Business Administration website and do a search for the interim final rules for the PPP program. You could Google that and you should be able to find the actual rules and it's in a FAQ format and they do have other um, hypothetical calculations there that'll help you with your own calculations. Thank you so much. Great, I think when uh, well, Qua gets our next guest ready, I'll, I'll talk to you a little bit about uh, thanking some of the sponsors that make this possible. And if you're interested in sponsoring, reach out to us. You could send uh, a note via any of the links or ehorton at shccnj.org. This episode was sponsored by Mercury and by our friends at Horizon Blue Cross Blue Shield of New Jersey. We're going to talk now about a concept called the big pivot. Our corporations, well, the definition of big pivot, I'm going to let our guests describe, but what's big pivot mean to me? I want to know what corporations are learning from this crisis, right? And I want to know, are they going to take advantage and create stronger bonds with their customers? I have a struggle often that uh, many corporations, their vendors, their senior management and their board of directors don't reflect their consumers and the people putting money in their pocket. So I've often used this analogy. If you sell widgets and 20% of your widget customer base are... Uh, Hispanic, as an example, then your board of directors should reflect that. You should have, if you have 10 board members, two should be of Hispanic origin. You're going to be nimble. You're going to make better dis business decisions. And we've seen ridiculous mistakes in corporate America. Spelling Columbia wrong was a mistake that a sneaker company made years ago, the country of Columbia. Um, and that company obviously didn't have anybody of Hispanic origin on their board. So cultural intelligence is important in your workforce. It's important in your vendors, 
and it's important in your board of directors. So I'm very interested how this crisis, who's going to be nimble, who's going to be of good heart and do things for the right reason, who's going to use the Hispanic community like we've been used before to throw a couple dollars of us and ignore the fact that COVID-19 um, could be linked to certain health issues. And if you're a producer of a product that contributes to that health issue, they're scrambling now to put money into chambers like ours and to other chambers. But do we take that money or do we hold them accountable for our health, which traditionally the health of the African-American and Hispanic community is much worse when it comes to diabetes and other factors. And that's why you're seeing COVID-19 really impacting us. Um, so we luckily today we have Jeff Gomez of Starlight Runner. He's a gentleman who worked on projects such as Avatar, Pirates of the Caribbean, and other Disney properties. And my friend Giovanna Aguilar, who introduced me um, to Jeff, who's a filmmaker, a producer, uh, a, producer uh, uh, a dear uh, friend of mine, a and a very talented person. So we're lucky to have them all here today. I'm going to let them kick off and talk about the big pivot. I'm you know, I'm personally in this space in production, and I'm totally excited to 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 speak to have this uh, uh, discussion. So, uh, I guess uh, I guess uh, kick it away. Absolutely, Jeff. All right, hey. All right, uh, hey. I'm Jeff Gomez. I'm the uh, I'm chief Gomez, executive officer of Starlight, of Starlight Runner Entertainment. Entertainment. We, have we have offices in. in uh, 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 New, York uh, New York City and Manhattan, Manhattan as, well as well as in New Jersey and Monmouth, Monmouth County. County. And, and um, uh, we, we work with uh, production, production companies and, uh, and, uh, and vendors uh, across the tri-state tri area, but also in uh, Los, Los Angeles, Angeles Hollywood. and Hollywood. Uh, 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 well, uh, hi, everybody. Nice. Uh, thank you, Carlos and the Hispanic Chamber for the invitation. I am a multimedia content producer and writer. I actually come from banking. So I was very interested in what Michael was sharing about PPP and coming from that world of underwriting and working with businesses. I know how difficult it can be to underwrite, but um, I'm happy to be here with Jeff, who I admire. And we were actually working on a conference to hopefully um, offer to all of you when we're back to normal. And um, just a little bit about the big pivot, I had started, you know, we, as we all are doing online communications now, thinking about what social responsibility is and um, taking it more of a, of a leadership role, if you will, as Carlos had mentioned, looking at what companies are doing right and what companies might be able to change in order to really be accountable to their consumers. So um, that's what we're here for is to have this discussion and also how content producers like myself and like Jeff and like can really um, spread the messages that are about positive uh, building relationships and helping businesses during this really hard time. I have a question for Jeff. Um, so, what are you seeing in the industry in the in Hollywood and production all stopped and agency agencies are you know laying off all these agents left and right. Uh, freelance. This is a that's a it's a freelancing industry. Uh, it must be a a mess over there. It is really tough. It is really um, tough. Uh, there, uh, but, but I'm, I'm also surprised, surprised at how quickly um, uh, people, people are brainstorming ways, ways to, to kind of get around these uh, these, uh, these blockages. Uh, all, uh, all you have, have to do is look, look at that, that uh, amazing uh, 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 Lady Gaga, Gaga concert from, from uh, 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 last week at how, and how they were able to put together, together uh, all these uh, uh, disparate uh, uh, performers, uh, performers from all around, around the world and create, and create something that was relatively smooth and, and compelling. Um, um, the, um, the, um, uh, the, uh, in, 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 in production in general, of course, of course um, a general uh, physical, physical production is entirely stopped. stopped. There, were there were even, even um, uh, season, season finales, finales, you know, end of season episodes that, that were not, uh, were not uh, they, 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 they weren't completed. completed. And so, and so <laughs> regular, regular television is running out of television. Out of um, the, 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 streaming the streaming services, services have enough content to last for the summer, summer but even, even then, then it, it, things, things are going to start to get tight. tight. 
um, um, uh, uh, animation, animation uh, a, a digital, digital production, production, they found, they found a, fa a fairly quick way to uh, re remote produce. produce. And, so and so we're, we're seeing um, a, a, a big call for um, animated uh, projects and, and, um, uh, and the uh, uh, continuation of, of animation uh, around, around the world. The world. Uh, so, so that's, that's kind, kind of a good news. news. Um, something, um, something that, that I think also is, is, is really, really fascinating, fascinating is that, that we are starting to see audio, audio uh, really, really uh, reach new, new levels, levels uh, in, in, terms in terms of prominence. Of prominence. Um, uh, these, uh, these are podcasts, podcasts. This, is this is radio, this is, this is um, um, uh, audio, uh, audio books. books. Uh, Audible, Audible in, in uh, Newark, New Jersey, Jersey is, is, is still doing quite well, quite well because, because there is increased demand for, for, for this kind of, of content. Um, so, so um, if, if, um, if, you if you wanted, wanted to communicate with your uh, customer base and with, and with your clients, clients uh, now, now is the time, time to think about audio, audio uh, things, things like podcasting and, and so forth, uh, uh, to, uh, to stay in touch with them. Absolutely. I uh, totally agree. So I would say that currently anyone that creates content, this is a, this is a buyer's market at the moment. Um, because right now it's so scarce on producing anything right now, and if you and then obviously, I think you, I think a lot of companies have to reimagine how what the business is going to look like going forward. You know, because we don't know how long this is going to last, but but the business has got to figure out how to survive. Otherwise, but I, I can't imagine that everyone would be able to reimagine this stuff, and not everyone has the same capabilities. But, 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 but what about what about like you're talking about like freelancers like camera operators cinematographers gaffers grips mm. you know uh production mm. designers you know you know where how you know if they don't have a business where are they gonna go you know i, I mean it's 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 uh it's interesting um, it, it's very difficult, um, it, it's uh, very difficult. Uh, and, yes. and maybe uh, uh, Giovanna can chime in, Giovanna but one thing that in, is one thing that uh, amazing is, to me is uh, how quickly me, um, uh, people, uh, people uh, like, like you, Koa, are, 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 are coming into demand. demand. Uh, people, uh, people can help um, uh, people, uh, people who are at home set up uh, uh, home uh, technical, technical facilities, facilities whether, whether for audio, audio or, or video, video, are coming in demand. demand. Uh, we're, we're seeing theater, theater for, example, for example, which is, which is really, really interesting. interesting. Uh, live, live theater, theater is, is being um, uh, uh, broadcast um, through, through the internet, internet and, and, um, and people, people need help to set this stuff up. up. Uh, we're, uh, we're seeing, seeing um, some, uh, some people who have experience with camera, camera work and, and with uh, technical, technical setups um, uh, kind of hire themselves out so that, that they can help people remotely uh, uh, to, to set up these rigs, rigs and allow for uh, this kind, kind of content to be generated from home. home. That's so promising. Gio, yeah, you want to jump in? Yeah, well, to what Jeff is saying, there are a lot of tools that we have. And I think right now the, the incredible thing about creatives is that we can get together and find solutions and put together shows. If you look at the live shows, for instance, at night, they're doing now from at home. However, um, we've been curating content for quite a while. I remember that uh, a, couple, a couple of years ago, actually, when the World Cup happened, we were curating content. I believe it was for one of the Met Spanish networks. And there are applications out there that you can use to, for instance, uh, solicit content from people, right? And maybe through your own phone, you can start having your own shows and sending it to um, to this application. You send a cure, you send a um, a query. Okay, I'm looking for, you know, an intro to this, and then people will submit. So I think we have an opportunity to utilize. This. The resources we have, companies, for instance, I think this one's called Greenfly, where you're actually putting together a show based on users, right? Users that are watching shows and creating their own content. So um, going back to what Jeff is saying, I think we have an opportunity that creatives like the camera people, the producers, the writers are coming together off-site remotely to start to see what kind of programming we can offer as well awesome um i think i think humans have a way to adapt 
to the situation, and that's the that's why we are we've been around for fifty thousand years so <laughs> as hoping sapiens. But um, I would say that you know I I, I, would, I would ask about what are some advice that you could give to I think this this I don't think it just pertains to just the entertainment space. I think there's a lot of industries where you know this is my belief is that. It's going to be, remember when this industry used to exist. This could, be, this could be the new, this is the new world. Not every industry is going to, gonna, not everyone's going to survive through it, but, they're gonna, but they'll be able to survive by reimagining a new business, a new startup. And it's a, I think it's an it's a amazing opportunity for people to launch and stuff. We might find the next Mark Zuckerberg, or the, uh, right? Or the, the next Elon Musk. Through, through all this uh, uh, opportunity, so my opinion it's yes, you know I think I think if we if we if we start thinking about how do we get back to normal, I'm not sure that's the the right answer. I mean, what are your thoughts on that, Jeff or Gio? Yeah, actually, um, uh, yeah, actually Starlight yeah, Runner uh, is Starlight um, Runner is in is, discussions um, with a number of companies about the, um, uh, um, uh, improving. Uh, their remote, remote experience, experience. Um, uh, particularly, particularly for, for things like, like uh, uh, conferences, uh, for uh, uh, theatrical plays, um, uh, for um, uh, 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 even, even conventions, very, very large-scale large uh, kinds of, of conferences. Um, it, it's it's, it's uh, interesting. It's the difference between um, uh, sitting at home alone and just watching something and somehow uh, building on top of these established technologies to create uh, a feeling of warmth, a feeling of connection, uh, a feeling uh, that one could share one's expertise. Uh, even, even though, though there, there seem to be a lot of people around us and, 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 and so forth, um, uh, uh, to make genuine connections and networking, networking uh, 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 even under this kind of uh, circumstance. circumstance. Um, uh, and, uh, and you're right, right there's, there's going to be an industry born to create uh, um, applications on top of established, uh, established technologies like the ones that we're using to talk with each other right now. I did want to raise. Um, um, I did uh, want to raise. Uh, oh, I'm um, sorry, Giovanna. Uh, go ahead. I'm sorry, Giovanna. Oh, go, go ahead. Go ahead. I wanted to raise uh, wanted another to raise, issue uh, in terms of opportunity for all of us as as people who are involved in businesses and who might own businesses. Um, unlike, unlike any, any other, other time in history. history now, now is your, your chance to distinguish and elevate your brand. Your brand. Um, and, and, and this, this is done, done by something, by something that, that we have been surprised up until now is not, not being done, done enough. enough. And, and that, that is to listen to and uh, uh, locate and dialogue, dialogue with, with your customer, customer base. base. Um, uh, uh, people, the level, the level of anxiety is so high across, across the board. The board. Um, that, that if they know, know that you are aware of their issues, issues if, you if you are aware that, that you have a product or, or even, even the message behind your product is, is of some, some comfort to these people, people um, that, that you need to communicate that to them, to them uh, uh, and, and make uh, intimate, intimate and direct connections through, through social media, media uh, that, uh, that engages uh, your, uh, your uh, uh, customer base, your consumer, your consumer in, in authentic and, and genuine, genuine dialogue, dialogue, dialogue that is warm, dialogue that is solution-based, dialogue, uh, dialogue that is sympathetic to this anxiety. Uh, people want to know that everything's going to be all right, and, and we, we, as business owners, um, uh, uh, we have a chance, chance to tell them, them yes, because, because we are going to contribute to that sense of uh, calmness and security in these, in these troubled, troubled times. times. I totally agree about that. Um, call us, jump in if you want, but I would say it's 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 uh, brand. You mentioned about branding, and you know it is the essential. Uh, it is probably the most important part in building any company, <laughs> you know, uh, and it's one of the hardest things to do. And so, in my opinion, it, it it's and I think people who are in the digital age right now, well, we're jumping into here, and anyone that wasn't in the digital age, they're going to be struggling. And so, in my opinion, because of those struggles, there's going to be a lot of opportunities. 
you know, for people to help in that space, like you said. Um, you were saying, Gio? No, it's just going back to what Jeff was saying is that communication is so important. And under this, the big pivot, what is actually going to happen? What we're trying to do, um, at least, you know, we each of us individually having a social responsibility to, to what we're looking, not just to produce in terms of content, but what businesses we're going to be doing business with and how our brands represent our own values. And what Jeff said about being genuine is very important, where now you have some companies that are advertising and might be exploiting the situation. And someone, I think in an article that I read uh, today, they, they described it as this after ad, asterizing, this asterizer, uh, advertising, something like that. So um, when we are connecting, we have to present accountability for how we're taking action to contribute to a solution to what Jeff was saying. Um, also in a very transparent way, so that way it's something integrated into our own corporate or small business value system, um, not just because, you know, this is happening right now, but it's really how we do business. Um, Carlos, are there any uh, questions on the, on the social? I'm going to ask a question of Jeff. How do you think, uh, talking about the big pivot, how do you think corporations should be planning should be marketing, planning budgets, marketing budgets, social responsibility, social corporate responsibility, responsibility, responsibility budgets, budgets you know, during this crisis? You know, I feel this like, because I've reached out like, to many as an organization, many, as an organization uh, we're doubling the amount uh, of work we do for our members, filling out loan applications, etc. And my revenue has dropped 100%. So, I've reached out and a police I've saying, hey, guys, can you help? Saying, hey, and a lot guys, of the responses were kind of surprising because I know there are companies that are still doing well and they could be open at 100%. And they're like, well, we're really focusing like, well, on the health aspects right now. So we're donating masks. We're donating these type of things and really completely ignoring their consumer base and their friends and their family. So... Can you tell so, me how to do it right, and, and who do you think right might be doing it wrong? And without naming a company, what's the wrong strategy? strategy? <laughs> no, no I, 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 I'm, I'm seeing everything, everything that you're talking, talking about, about, and and, um, and the the issue here is uh, that that, that, the that the companies that are not doing what what you're what recommending uh, for, them for them to do, they're, they're not recognizing the great pivot. pivot. Um, uh, they're, they're in some kind of survival mode, mode that is uh, 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 fully, uh, fully intent on maintaining, on maintaining the highest uh, 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 status quo, the highest, highest um, uh, profit, profit margin at the end of what will be a terrible year. year. I really, I really think, think that, that um, uh, we, need we need to buckle, buckle down and, and, and power through as a collective. And that's, and that's I think, where the organization and what you're doing, Carlos, Carlos uh, where, uh, that where that becomes, becomes so important because we are a, a voice that can unify and um, and ask that, that uh, we take the uh, the, the customers' uh, feelings into, into consideration, consideration and um, and, work and work to assist them. them. Uh, yes, uh, um, uh, there's, there's the issue of, of, of uh, medical uh, supplies and and, and, and things like that, uh, but, there but there is also. also um, uh, unlike, unlike any, any kind of, of uh, a situation before, before a, 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 uh, a customer base, and, and by, the by the way, an employee, employee base that is experiencing unprecedented uh, uh, levels, levels of uncertainty, of, of, of genuine fear. fear. And, and, um, and, and we need to take that into consideration. consideration. Um, uh, uh, so, so um, um, my, my best, best recommendation is, is, is Carlos, Carlos, that you keep doing what you're doing and we do it behind you. Uh, 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 to, to make, make a call, call uh, to uh, uh, to uh, companies across New Jersey, across the tri-state tri area, ultimately, ultimately across, across the country, um, that, that, that we have to kind of, kind of duck down and power through. through. There, there, there was, was not a, a terribly damaged underlying economy to the United, to the United States. States, so we, so we will bounce, bounce back. back. Um, um, we're just, just going to have to take this black eye, eye um, and power through um, and, and, um, and turn ourselves to reconciliation, to sympathy, um, and, and to genuine uh, a dialogue with our customers and our employees. I have a question. Um, not really. Do, do you think that the government can restore, restore 
businesses that or industries that are that will suffer through this if there's even an interest in that Giovanna Giovanna rephrase meaning I would say it's like you know it's it's not it's not like the economy the economy was doing really well before all this Right, and it was booming, you know, and the growth. It was a, you know, even from from this from stats, is the is the best economic growth we ever had, and and now all of a sudden, this is a forced shutdown. It's a forced shutdown. And so, but then you, you also see the stock market up, even during this time. So there must be some sort of prediction happening in there. So I would like to know what your thoughts are that if. If there's a, any chance of of it coming back to norm, because not everyone not everyone wants to hear that they have to reimagine their business. This is their business. They, you know, it's very mm-hmm. hard to f- have a business in the first place. Now that you're asking to do another startup, uh, it's okay. it's um, you know it's scary. If I could shift gears, I might jump in here and shift gears back to like my Wall Street finance and banking days. What I'm seeing different from now from the Great Recession is that it's affecting everybody. It's not just a segment of business owners who had mortgages and got into the wrong type of mortgage and then are filing for bankruptcy or foreclosures. You're seeing a whole economy, not just in the U.S., globally affected. And you've already started to see this pre- well, this coordination a little lagging, and your question goes to the government. I think the government with the private sector it has to be public, private sector working cohesively. Small business, like what, what uh, Carlos is doing, small businesses are crucial. But it's also going back to the conversation of communication and dialogue and using the resources that are there. Yes, small businesses are affected. I'm an area in Bergen County where you know we have a lot of restaurants. There's a big Asian community here that unfortunately, aside from the pandemic, it's uh, been also affected by a lot of biases, right? So part of the responsibility is through government, but really the private sector that, that has been doing well. There are industries that have been doing fairly, um, you know, doing the booming economy quite well. One of the things that it would be hoovas, for instance, is for businesses and, and the owners of businesses to help their employees. For instance, um, and this goes back to a trickle effect, right? Where you have someone that is an employee of yours that might be incurring a lot of debt right now, and instead of paying a credit card, maybe that employer can loan out a little bit of money to help them offset some of their, you know, living expenses for a short period of time. These are all things that have not. Um, in other words, you look at the Great Recession and what's happening now. This is unprecedented. So I really think when you start thinking of the financial aspects, the private sector is going to be leading way with the government coming to complement through organizations like, um, you know, what the SBA is doing. But more importantly, uh, I think it's organizations like the one Carlos has, the small business um, and regional economies. I hope that kind of answers your question. Yeah, that was uh, that's great insight on that. Um, any other questions, Carlos? Up, oh, you're muted, Carlos. <laughs> Technical difficulties. Technical difficulties. I think they've both been very generous, Jeff, and, very generous, so, uh, Jeff generous and Giovanna. So uh, generous of your time. So I think we should start wrapping time. up. So I think we should start wrapping up. Look next and, week, and on Sunday, and on Sunday, please tune into Univision tune for Amigos de Univision, where Luis Talahaz and myself will be conducting some interviews and talking to small businesses. Sunday at 11:30 on Univision. Thank you so much, you two. Thank you, Jeff. Thank you, Giovanna. Um, and we uh, our uh, contact we information. Our, uh, contact information. Absolutely. We'll. I guess we'll have it posted. Um, I'll put it on the uh, on our on website the, uh, shccnj.org. I'll put, uh, contacts, I'll put uh, contacts for uh, for everybody that was on the for everybody that on the uh, uh, show today. On the we'll also uh, show post today. it on the description in the on the YouTube if that's okay, and even on the Facebook post as well. 
Fantastic. Feel Fantastic. free to reach out to me, Feel everyone who's watching, everyone um, who's uh, watching uh, and uh, uh, if you have more questions about the space. I'm also um, doing uh, uh, I'm kind also of remote doing, coaching uh, kind of for, uh, for uh, uh, people, people who are trying to survive, survive with their, their, businesses their businesses and, uh, and, uh, and stay creative in, in, in these uh, uh, tough times. times. Um, um, and I can, I can talk, talk to you more about that, about that uh, uh, when, when we uh, get into, into direct, direct touch. touch. Uh, Carlos, uh, Carlos, you're doing a fantastic job. job. This, uh, 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 this show is, is a great uh, service. Uh, uh, let us all know if uh, the recording know actually know will be posted somewhere so that more people can get to see it. Yeah, it'll be on Facebook and on the website. I understand YouTube had some difficulty, so we'll try to clean that up also. Some of the sound had a slight issue. Had a slight issue. deal. Thanks, guys. Thanks, Thanks, guys. Everybody. Thanks. Bye. Good deal. Bye-bye. Bye-bye now. <laughs> Bye-bye. <laughs>